What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting, where we're going to be financing the construction here of a capital asset. And what we're talking about is this is where the city or municipality is going to build a new building, and they're going to have to finance this building here. So the construction of this building here, and we're going to be looking at financing it with some long-term bonds. And we're going to look at how we'd account for these bonds being issued both at a premium and at a discount. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here when we're looking at the uh, constructing this capital asset here, first we have to look at uh, our capital projects fund here, and we're going to have to record the budget. So I've got the budget items showing out here, the estimated other financing sources, appropriations, and budgetary fund balance. But before we get into that here, what I want to point out here, when you're talking about this uh, capital projects budget here, the debits and credits have opposite signs here compared to the regular, if you go in into, when we go into the capital projects fund itself, it for example here for our other financing sources here. Uh, we've got a debit plus here, credit minus. But when we get into a, our regular accounting here under the capital projects, the other financing sources would have a debit minus, credit plus. So not to be confused here. So first off, um, to record the budget here. You're going to have a uh, setup here as your inflows, estimated other financing sources. This is where we're going to finance this uh, construction project here with bonds issued. So what we would do here uh, for these uh, financing sources here, you debit it. In this case, our example is going to be for $700,000 worth of bonds that are going to be issued. Then moving over into our, into our outflows here, we'd set up our appropriations control account. That's the amount that the, we have authority to spend here from the city here. And we have a credit here of $675,000. We're going to issue bonds for $700,000, but we only have the authority to spend $675,000 of, of those bonds issued. Now, what we have to set up is this budgetary fund balance. So really the difference between our inflows here of 700000 and our debit amount here and our credit appropriations control here is six, 675000 So we need another credit balance here in this budgetary fund balance here of $25,000. So what we essentially have here is we have a surplus here. We have an extra 25000 here in our for our outflows here. This is our extra amount here in our budgetary fund balance. Okay, so that's taking care of uh, recording the budget. Now let's move down here and into our capital projects fund itself. Now this is where we're going to be looking at issuing these bonds here at a premium. We'll start out with that first here and what it's going to involve here is their capital projects fund and also the debt service fund. So first for our capital projects fund. Cash account, in this case, we're going to re actually receive 735,000 for the bonds that are here that were issued at $700,000. So we have a $35,000 premium here. And this is what this example is really based on. And we're gonna have to trace this $35,000 premium through our different accounts here. So first for our capital projects fund, debited here for 735,000, that's for the bond proceeds. And then the credit would go to other financing sources control account here. Credit that here for $735,000. That's for the bond issue. Now, moving down to our debt service fund account. This is, And then we're going to be looking at the general long-term debt account group here. So what we have to do is we have to record these at the same time here. What we're, what's going into our capital projects fund and into our debt service fund. So for our debt service fund, this is, again, under the general long-term debt account group here. So what we would have here, we have to look at the amount to be provided for the payments here of this long-term debt. That would be an asset account here. So we would debit that here for $700,000. That would be the face value of the bond. And then our bonds payable, uh, again here for a general long-term debt account, we would credit that here for $700,000. Again, face value to bond. So you see what's going on here. Capital projects fund, you record the bond proceeds, what you actually received here for the um, issuing those bonds. And then for the debt service fund, this is where you record the face value of the bonds. What you're gonna have to pay back here uh, when these bonds come due. Okay, and just remember, they're both recorded here at the same time. Okay, now let's move up here and Again, we're going to be 
looking at inner fund entries for this bond premium. We're going to have to trace that bond premium through our various accounts. So what we're going to start out with is our capital projects fund here. And we're going to be looking at really a well, a two or three step process here to follow this, this bond premium too. So remember our bonds premium here is $35,000, $735,000 worth of proceeds, $700,000 par value on those bonds. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to move this uh, $35,000 worth of bonds premium from our capital projects fund here into our debt service fund here. So uh, what, we'll look at the entries here. Now remember this debt service fund, this is where we accumulate the money for funding our projects. Okay, so let's look at step one here. Well, I'm showing it as setting up our uses control account here in our capital projects fund. So uh, what we set up here is our other financing uses control account here. And that would be step one. Now, step two here, this is where we're gonna transfer this bond premium from the capital projects fund to the debt service fund here. So what we would do here, let's look at it here. So we would take here our cash account here, uh, the, that cash that we, we collected 735,000 here, but $35,000 was a premium here. So we would credit or reduce our cash account here for 30, 35,000 and then it would go into uh, the associated debit amount would go to other financing uses control. We're gonna use this 35,000 here. So we debit our uh, other financing uses control here for $35,000. Okay, so that takes care of our for uh, setting up here our cash account here, uh, reducing our cash account here in our capital projects fund, and then setting it up as uh, other financing uses control. Now, the next thing we have to do here is we have to look at what's going on in our debt service fund here. So what we wanna do is we wanna move that $35,000 into our debt service fund to uh, where we accumulate our funding here to pay off that debt. So what we would do here, we're gonna debit our cash account here for $35,000 for uh, what's being provided here for long-term debt. And then our, other, our credit goes to our other financing sources control account here, credit that here for $35,000 as a source here. So that's going for, to our debt service fund here. So really what's going on here, this cash here that we're, re, we're taking that premium amount here, $35,000 from our cash account here in our capital projects fund, and it's being moved into increasing our cash account here in our debt service fund here for $35,000. And then this other financing sources control, that's a source that's coming in. So we're taking and using this money here from our capital projects fund here, that 35,000 here debit amount, and we're moving it to the other financing sources or increasing our other financing sources control account here in our debt service fund here for 35,000. So you see what's going on here with uh, where we're transferring this bond premium from our capital projects fund here to our debt service fund. Okay, now, um, Let's, we've got one more step to deal with here, and that would be step three. Let's move down and look at it here. This is where we're not gonna actually have a transfer of funds here, but we have to, we're, because we made that uh, permanent transfer here up above from our capital projects fund to our uh, debt service fund, we have to set, it requires entry here to the general long-term debt group here. So general long-term debt account here, I'm showing it. I'm gonna show three accounts here and as that's gonna be in our general long-term debt account group here. Now there's only three accounts in this general long-term debt uh, account group here. And that's really to carry the debt here. And we're gonna look at that. What, what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have the amount available for payment of long-term debt. And that's an asset account here. And then our amount, uh, amount to be provided for payment of long-term debt account, an asset account here. And this is where we actually uh, carry the debt here. This is where we have our bonds payable. Okay, so let's look at what we would do here for this uh, step three here. And there's no transfer of funds, it's only an entry account here. So amount available for payment of debt, we have debit that here for 35,000. And then the amount of 
to be provided for payment, we're going to credit that here for 30, 35000 So we're going to, just looking at this amount to be provided here, so let's say we got that 700000 that we're going to have to pay back when those bonds come due, but because we receive that premium up front here of $35,000, we can reduce the amount to be provided from the payment here uh, by $35,000, because that was being provided. So let's just look at the flow here. Uh, no transfer here, but just to see where the flow would come. So if we got, looking at our debt service fund here, we had, uh, that was uh, other financing sources that we had here at 35,000. So that would actually become available here through this general long-term debt group here, the amount available for the payment. We had a credit here of 35,000, so we would debit or increase our amount available here by 35,000. Now, the amount to be provided, well, that's really from their cash account here. No transfer cash, only you can look at it in terms of the fact that we actually move this cash from the capital projects fund into our debt service fund here, that 35,000. So you can see what goes on down here. The cash here uh, in our debt service fund, actually that would be the amount to be for provided here for the payments. We would have a credit here of 35,000. So just take looking at it from terms of our debt service fund where we actually have accumulated this cash here to pay off uh, that payment here uh, on those bonds here, that was the premium amount here, remember. It would actually go into the, uh, it would be a re re reflected here in the amount to be provided for the payments here. Reduce the amount to be provided here by 35,000. So just going back here, no transfer here, but step three, because we had uh, transferred those monies here from the capital projects funds into the debt service fund, we have to set up this, these other entries here. So. Just, we went through that here before. So amount available for the payment, a debit that here for 35,000, that was the bond premium here, and amount to be provided for the payment, we credit that here by 35,000, reduce it for that bond premium. So that's really how we deal with a bond premium. Next, we'll look at uh, issuing these bonds at a discount, and then also look at how we handle the interest payments on these bonds. Okay, now let's look at bonds issued at a discount. Again, it's going to involve the capital projects fund and our debt service fund, and on our debt service fund, it's going to be the general long-term debt account group. Okay, so first for our capital projects fund, this is where we're going to record these the bond proceeds here. So for our cash account, we're going to debit a cash here for $690,000. That's the amount that we received here, the 690,000. They were issued for 700,000, we only received 690,000. And then our credit here is gonna go to other financing sources control account here under a capital projects uh, fund here. So credit that here for $690,000. That would be what the, the, what the bonds were issued at here, what we received, $690,000. Okay, so then uh, let's look at our debt service fund here. Again, general long-term debt account group. So uh, this is where we're going to record the face value of the bonds here. So, um, And this is for, we'd start out with our amount to be provided here for the payments here, again for this long-term debt, and that's going to have to be a debit amount here for $700,000. Dollars, the face value, what those bonds were issued at. Now, and our, it would, uh, the credit here is going to go to our bonds payable here. Again, general long-term debt account here, credit it here for $700,000. So what we're doing, uh, our recording going on here in a capital projects fund and our debt service fund, they recorded here at the same time. But what we would do here when these bonds are issued at a discount, uh, you would be stop right here because there isn't any premium to account for. The question is, did they raise enough money? So if not, then you will need another source of financing. Okay, so that takes care of recording our bonds issued at a discount. Now let's go over here and let's look at recording semi-annual interest payments on these bonds that are issued. So we'll start with our semi-annual interest payment. Now everything goes on in the debt service fund here. So we're gonna have a cash account, we're gonna have matured interest payable here, and an expenditures control account, all in the debt service account. So what we wanna look at here 
when we're uh, recording these semi-annual interest payments, uh, we have to look at modified accrual accounting. So the governments do not record or recruit interest or principal until it's matured, due, and payable. That's modified accrual accounting. So we wouldn't recognize any expenses under expenditures control unless those three conditions are met here. Uh, the, it's the, uh, the, you've got a matured, due, and payable in this case for the interest and also uh, interest and principal. Okay, so starting with, let's just say we have $42,000 worth of int matured interest. The key here is use the matured interest payable account. So you would credit that here for $42,000 and then under expenditures control debit that here as an expense here in the debt service fund for $42,000. Okay, so now when we send out the payment here, then you would debit or reduce your matured interest payable here by 42,000. And this is where you would credit cash here, reduce your cash account here by 42,000. That's when the payment is sent. And then finally here, we have to deal with those issue costs. Say for example, we had $10,000 worth of issue costs on those bonds. So in both cases here, uh, pay up, uh, bonds issued a discount or premium you're going to have to account for these issue costs. You're going to have to expense them. Whatever the issue cost was, you expense it in the first year here of those of the bond here. So let's just say we had $10,000 worth of issue costs, so credit or reduce your cash here by $10,000 and then go and recognize it under your expenditures control here for $10,000. So the key is when you're dealing with modified accrual accounting, with governmental accounting, you do not record accrue interest or principal until it's matured due and payable. Okay, so now let's look at recording when the bonds are due, including let's just say there's that semi-annual interest payment. So again, this we got in this case we're going to add in here a matured bonds payable along with a matured interest payable and then we're going to have our cash account and our expenditures control all in the debt service fund. So let's just say here when these bonds are matured, let's say their $700,000 was their face value here so you'd credit your matured bonds payable here for $700,000 and then uh, the expenditures control would get debited here for a total of $742,000 because we have $700,000 here on the bonds pay a mature payable here for the, the matured face value here and then we also have say one interest payment here of $42,000. So $700,000 here for the bonds payable plus the interest payment of $42,000 gives you an expense here under expenditures control of $742,000. And then when it's actually paid here, you send out the payment, you would debit or reduce your matured bonds payable by $700,000 and also your matured interest payable here for $42,000. And then this is where you would credit or reduce your cash here by $742,000. So the question is, where does this money come from, the $742,000? So let's just go look at it in these terms here. So again, would have to be in our debt service fund. Either you're going to have transfers from other sources, you're going to have some special tax levies here, or you could have some investment income. So just looking at our transfers here in our debt service fund, you would record it as a debit here to cash, and then you would credit other financing sources here. Again, in our debt service fund, credit here uh, for other financing sources. And say, for example, you had some investment income. Again, debit cash here, and then you would be crediting investment uh, investment control account of some sort. Okay, so that'll take care of our discussion here on bonds issued at a discount and at a premium and how we'd account for it when we're uh, using governmental accounting here to uh, finance some uh, capital projects through an issuing of some bonds.